Welcome to Midwest White Tail. It's October the 8th and uh, we've got this freshly combined uh, bean field out here and uh, we're gonna cut them off from their bedding on their way out to eat some beans. So let's go. We've got this really nice oak tree that's been releasing all the acorns into this food plotted area. We've got three nice scrapes. Um, I know there are does that frequent this area, but I'm also hoping to see some, some bucks tonight. So, so we'll see. from our stand. It's a really nice buck. I'm really excited. Had a good shot and um, thankful for the opportunity. Uh, thankful for the, the Missouri archery tag that my husband gifted me for our anniversary. And um, thanks to my mother-in-law for watching our new baby. He's four months old now, William. And um, just so excited to be out with my husband and, and have a great evening. So last year, Monica got to hunt for the first time in literally five years. And uh, her first night out, she took a, a great buck right there at the Copperhead stand. This year, uh, since I went to Greenland, she was an angel, took care of everything while I was gone. And uh, she's gonna be basically rewarded with the opportunity to hunt uh, first thing this year here in Missouri. So uh, September 15th, I'm hoping to have her in the stand with me down at the Copperhead stand. Uh, I got a mock scrape in there. Uh, everything is close quarters for Monica. Uh, nice close shots. Super excited. We're going to bring you guys along. Um, we're excited for another exciting year of Midwest Whitetail, the Great Plains. Thanks for watching.
running late. Had some visitors here at the farm tonight, uh, my cousin, and uh, visited with them for a minute. There's already a deer out in uh, the beans right next to the county road. But I'm um, hunting the edge of a bean field tonight, uh, going to the persimmon tree. I've had a lot of luck here over the years. Uh, it's only about 100 yards from my parents' house, so I'm gonna sneak in there real quiet. The <laughs> wind is perfect for this, so I'm excited. I'll see you in the stand. So the other night, uh, I was visiting with my neighbor and he asked if I wanted to go on an airplane ride. I said, sure. So we, uh, we got in and flew around the farm a couple times, kind of checking on crops was the main, the main objective. I noticed on this edge, I mean, we had a severe drought this year, very, very dry. So there's a lot of dead patches and dry patches or whatever, but right along the edge of this field, um, from, from the air, you could tell how short the beans were right along this edge. So I thought, sure, there's a bunch of deer coming out on this edge. And I had a, a cuttyback camera, a Trax, and I decided to move it out to this edge. And as I was doing that, I was like, oh yeah, the persimmon tree. Let me just put it on the persimmon tree. I came up to the persimmon tree and there's uh, droppings all over. So I know the deer have been hitting it. So I put a little mock scrape out uh, just to concentrate you know, where the, where, so I get pictures on that scrape. The very first night, there's two or three bucks on it. Um, some deer my wife would love to shoot, so. Um, I'm out here tonight trying to scout, get a, get a good um, bead on exactly where they're coming up. Anyway, I'm gonna quiet down and hope the deer start moving. Actually, there's a deer right there. Looks like a fawn. Well, me and Monica hunted the last two nights without much to show for our efforts. And tonight, the night she goes to visit her dad, of course, had all these bucks out in the field. Pretty exciting. I mean, very exciting. I know uh, she would have been tickled to death with any of those bucks. None of them got close enough, but um, I think we can make a move on them or just be conservative and sit back and, and wait for them to come to that persimmon tree because um, the camera says they do that just about every night, so hopefully uh, next week we'll have a big buck down for you. Uh, thanks to my wife, Monica. Welcome to Midwest Whitetail, the Great Plains Show. It's September the 20th, according to my anniversary. Um, we've had lots of luck in the past. So I'm really pumped um, about not only that, but the weather has been nice. Um, we had cool front come through. Not just that, but Corey saw some nice bucks over here in the soybean field where we're going to hunt. Um, you can't see it from the county road, so it's it seems like the, tonight's the night. We'll we'll check it out. Thank you. 
Meh. Just take your time. Get another arrow. Save for this stupid yeah. thing, I think. Hey, bad shots happen. It happens. That sucks. That sucks that I <sighs> messed it up. Hey, bad shots happen. What matters is how we react to our bad shots, okay? We gotta give the deer some time. Do you understand? We gotta wait. So we watched the footage, and um, it looks like I may have hit the femoral artery, and uh, he was bleeding pretty good. We're gonna go check for blood before it gets too dark, and, and go from there. Well, it's 5.15 um, a.m. Next morning after Monica shot her buck. Um, <clears throat> We have a busy day, so I'm going uh, to go ahead and get started trying to find her buck. I did trail a little bit last night because, I, I, like I said, I thought she hit the femoral artery. Um, after a while, it was pretty obvious she had not. So I, I tracked on just little pin drops of blood uh, for about, well, whatever Onyx says, 250 yards, somewhere in there. Um, and then I found huge, huge globs of blood everywhere. Um, and then I could see her lighted knock uh, across the over across the valley over here. So I'm coming in a different way, uh, and just gonna while it's dark try and find her lighted knock. So that is the plan. I'm gonna go see if I can't uh, turn up her buck. Felt something dead. Not what I was looking for. Yep, he's dead. Man, he's sweet. He's a sweet buck. He is sweet, Monica. I knew it. He is big, Monica. Yes! Found him. I could see a, a lighted knock last night. I could not find it back this morning. I walked right by him in the dark. I'm not saying I would have found him this morning in the daylight right away. I would have had to retrail him. But he got up from his bed last night and he moved, I don't know, about 40 yards from uh, that pen. I'm going to get him gutted at the very least. Field trip starts in, uh, in uh, two hours. So, and they're not going to move the field trip for me. It's only 65 kids. So uh, anyway, we found him. I'm so pumped. <laughs> so here he is, our anniversary buck. Um, he made his appearance last weekend when Corey was hunting by himself in the soybean field. And sure enough, um, my husband knew where to hang the stand and he hung it right before our anniversary. Um, and here he is. Um, I'm so excited that my mother-in-law volunteered to watch our boys um, so that I could get out in the woods. So thankful for my husband for hanging the stand, for, for covering this deer, and for making hunting so much fun. So thank you for tuning in to Midwest Whitetail, Great Plains Show. 
So I'm super pumped Monica was able to get her deer. Uh, but I did want to touch on a few things about the, the whole series of events. Most importantly, the shot. You know, that buck came up and we stopped him at 20 yards broadside, um, slightly quartering away. Monica took her time and she made a poor shot. That's gonna happen. You know, she, she didn't take a, you know, a quartering two shot or a, you know, a deer was moving or any of those things. You know, she took a good shot. She made a bad shot. It's gonna happen. So, you know, moving on from that, we, we have a, a bad shot on our hands. What are we gonna do? We're gonna give the deer some time. Um, initially, we thought she might have hit the femoral artery, um, but while it was still daylight, we got out and they looked and um, didn't find any blood on the ground that would indicate, you know, a, a solid artery hit. Um, so, we decided to wait. I came in, uh, so she shot the buck at six, six o'clock. I came back, um, kids were in bed, everybody was in bed. I came back around midnight and uh, trailed the deer about, you know, according to, that's the other thing. Onyx was absolutely critical in the recovery of this deer. Um, I, I clicked my tracks, I turned my tracks on and uh, the deer went approximately 200 yards um, until um, I got down all the way into the, the bottom where I thought the deer was bedding. Anyway, I thought where the, those, that bachelor group of bucks was coming from. And I got down there and I could see the lighted knock up on the other hill, um, probably another 100 yards. So about, you know, 300 yards travel. Uh, took me a long time to figure out that that was the lighted knock. And, you know, it had been six hours. And, uh, you know, I, I stood there for a long time just watching the lighted knock. And uh, I could see it like flickering or, or moving or something. And I just had an uneasy feeling about it. And then I heard something over on the other hillside in the general, general direction. And I thought, you know, just it wasn't worth it. There was a chance the deer was still alive. And uh, so what I did is I, I estimated the distance. In the dark, that's really hard to do, but I estimated the distance, how far I was from the deer, and I put a pin. Um, that way I, I came back. And if I came back in the, the morning, the next morning, I had a spot where I could go look if I, if I ended up losing blood. So I came back while it was still dark the next morning, and uh, um, sure enough, I found the buck, but I could not see the lighted knock because the deer had, had gotten up and moved, according to Onyx, 54 yards up up the valley further. further. So, um, and then he had, he had laid over on the other side and, and covered the, the lighted knock, so. Um, but Onyx was super, super important for me. Um, I use it almost every day. I'm a, a, a biologist and um, I use it to, uh, to draw, draw maps and um, you know, track my, uh, my crew's progress. And you know, we all use it, uh, send, send each other maps. Um, so it was instrumental in, in recovering Monica's deer. And uh, you know, I, I hope you guys enjoyed the footage. Um, I know, like I said, the shot wasn't perfect, um, but that's just that's part of bow hunting. Sometimes we all make mistakes. If you didn't rush the shot, you know, it's going to happen. But all is well that ends well, and we appreciate you watching right here on Midwest Whitetail, the Great Plains Show.